Uh, hi everyone, so today we're going to finish up with our last section of mechanics uh, and in lecture 7. So we are going to be dealing with uh, basically this concept or this loading style of fatigue. So fatigue uh, is a really common and actually really important um, kind of loading state. So we're going to deal typically with cyclic uh, fatigue, so cyclical loading. So you can imagine um, there's a common, you know, really, really common scenario. So if you have a bridge, I shouldn't try to draw, but, you know, uh, so if I have a bridge and I have cars going across, you know, or people walking across each of these days, you know, typically, again, there's some stress, again, cyclic loading. So people come on, uh, so you're loading it here, and then they're uh, releasing that load. So the load that you're applying can be cyclical over time. So uh, it's a common kind of stress state here. So you're kind of loading and unloading it uh, kind of periodically here. So there's some cyclical loading behavior as a function of time. So where there's this sigma max, and then there's this sigma min right here. So this is our maximum loading state, minimum loading state, uh, varies sinusoidally. You know, it doesn't have to technically, but again, um, that's typically what you'll kind of see. And you'll uh, load this for a number of cycles. You know, so there's some period here. So there's some number of cycles as well uh, that will occur as a function of time. So what we want to do is we want to kind of figure out, well, how many cycles NF will it take before my materials fail? So we're looking at trying to figure out for a given sigma max and a given sigma min and a crack size or crack flaw, A, uh, A naught, initial crack size, how many cycles to failure uh, will this material, or how many cycles will it take for this material to fail? Cycles to failure, or if you want to look at it another way, how many cycles will it survive? So we want to, again, avoid this catastrophic failure. And again, the, the hard part about fatigue is that you'll get catastrophic failure at lower applied stresses than your sigma F, you know, actual. So it's an insidious mechanism, again, just like we saw for creep, where creep yielded before um, our theoretical, you know, or our actual yield stress was predicted. Here, we're going to see catastrophic failure uh, earlier than we predict from, uh, again, theory, or, you know, even from the, kind of these mechanisms or, as well. So um, fatigue failure will occur because at each, um, basically what you'll see is uh, if we open up, let's say we have a, a little crack here. Each time we do our loading cycle, so load on, load off, that crack's going to grow just a tiny bit with each cycle. And the rate at which that crack grows is given by dA, dN. So A, remember, is your crack size. And N is, again, the number of loading cycles here. So uh, there is a mechanism. There's lots of different types of, uh, of fatigue. Static fatigue is when you have material that's under just the static constant load. So your stress as a function of time here is just this. But typically, it interacts with the environment, and there'll be some kind of uh, specifically stress corrosion cracking is a really huge problem, especially in uh, kind of the oil and gas industry and pipelines. Um, so basically, you'll have like a pipeline, um, so a pipe here, in some really nasty environment. There's some kind of you know initial crack here, and your nasty chemicals like sulfur or you know high temperature. So um, this uh, again, going back to my time in Pittsburgh in industry, stress corrosion cracking. Um, so it occurs at high temperatures and then really corrosive environments, so like sulfuric gas or, you know, kind of, you know, these nasty chemicals that come in here and then they, the environment actually extends that crack. So, uh, and it is assisted by this kind of constant, again, thinking about thin wall pressure vessels, we're always in kind of this pressurized state. So that also, that's your constant kind of load, this kind of, this could be your hoop stress, delta P over RT, you all know those, uh, <laughs> or actually, excuse me, uh, Yep, uh, delta P, excuse me, hoop stress, delta P, R over T. Uh, we know that sigma L, can't help myself, P, R over 2T. So uh, that is your longitudinal stress, this is your hoop stress, and uh, that static load will be constant as a function of time. Uh, and again, the nasty kind of stuff in the environment is going to kind of propagate that crap. It's gonna, a crack is going to make it grow. So crack, uh, crack tip chippens, uh, sharpens, excuse me propagates and then the process will repeat itself. So um, we are not going to deal too much with static fatigue. Instead, we're going to deal with uh, cyclic or classical fatigue. Um, so we have a material under cyclical load stress, just like we've shown up here uh, in this example. Um, so we need to figure out what's the frequency of the load. So again, that's just one over the period of the signal and the stress ratio. This R value is important. So what is the ratio of sigma min over sigma max? So if uh, I have a signal like this, where here's my stress, and this is uh, time, and this is zero. 
So if I have a stress that goes like this, so constant, oops, excuse me, constant. What is my R value? Except, except I kind of went off the rails here. So my stress max is just this value, and then my stress min is zero. So my R is just going to be zero. Uh, you could have uh, basically a value too that drops. Um, so the stress could be this is your zero here as function of time. The stress could actually be negative. Um, so your sigma min would be this is your sigma min. This is your sigma max. So your R here would be in this scenario would be infinity. But anyways, we'll get to that a little bit later. So again, the goal of this is we want to estimate the number of cycles to failure NF. A uh, number of cycles to grow a crack from an initial length, a not to the critical or catastrophic crack length of A sub C, which we've kind of derived previously. So, just like in creep, we have kind of these three distinct regimes again. So let's look at uh, kind of this plot. Let's see, let's see if it's on the next page here. And it is, luckily. So we have this slow growth regime. You have this Paris law regime where we actually have an expression that will give us um, dA dN is going to be equal to this, excuse me, delta k uh, times this uh, theoretical kind of value here. We're going to get to that in just a second. And then your high uh, growth rate regime here. So again, initially, uh, as we go through the number of cycles, if we don't have um, a large enough stress, you see nothing happens until we reach this kind of threshold value. So this stress intensity threshold value. So we need our stress, or our delta sigma is just going to be sig max minus sig min. That is the change in stress as you kind of apply that sinusoidal load. So until we reach this kind of magical value, we're not going to get basically any crack growth rate. So there's no uh, discernible crack growth rate here. Um, when we say that uh, the crack rate uh, is indetectable, it's basically 10 to the minus 8 millimeters per cycle. So, or less, the crack is dormant. So this is the uh, kind of the criterion for basically no crack growth rate. So the growth rate is 10 to the minus 8 millimeters per uh, cycle or even less. Um, so really, really, really low, but um, again, uh, it's extremely, extremely slow, but eventually it will occur, and then we hit our second regime. So in the mid-growth regime, this is our Paris regime. So we actually have a law um, that can describe what is, we have a, basically an expression. This is a linear kind of, or it appears kind of as linear once you kind of plot this. Um, we will generate an expression that tells us how will the uh, change in crack uh, how will our crack size grow as a function of the number of cycles? And we'll get an expression we can predict that here. Now, once we hit the region three, just like with creep, you're at kind of this uh, uh, high growth rate region. The material is just going to kind of instantaneously fracture and uh, crack, uh, and catastrophically fracture here. So we want to stay out of region three because once we hit region three, you can see this kind of this growth rate explodes in terms of your crack uh, growth rate, and you're gone at this point. That material is done; it's fractured, it's dead. So in the Paris law regime we can actually uh, have an expression, and that's what I was kind of trying to write here. So it is going to be DADN. Let me rearrange it. So in our regime two, in the Paris law regime, we're going to have an expression, which is DADN. I'm just going to keep this because we use that capital N cycles to failure. Some constant times delta K stress intensity to some scaling factor M. So again, we're going to have some power law relationship in here. So we're going to kind of use that as our M exponent. So let's go on to the next page and see that a little bit more nicely drawn or written in LaTeX. That's it. C is just a constant, and M is going to, um, this is going to depend on, again, our material as well, uh, and also R. So, again, all these, um, the one kind of annoying thing with, uh, <laughs> or the one kind of aspect of, you know, kind of doing, dealing with fatigue is that a lot of these are dependent on a lot of material properties, as we're about to see in a second. So, um, if we want to figure out what are the number of cycles to failure, we can just separate variables and integrate. So we know uh, from this, you know, delta k value that we kind of just introduced previously. So delta k, because we know that k i c is going to be equal to f times stress times square root of pi a. So if I want to see the change in stress intensity as a function of that cyclical loading behavior, as a function of time, it's just going to be f times that change in loading square root. Pi A. We plug that in, separate variables, and you'll end up with an expression like this. So we'll get back to this SN curves in a second. And after you do some integration, uh, again, use Mathematica, you'll end up with this really, really nice expression here. So we can see 
uh, we have the number of cycles to failure depends on AC, A naught, M, F. Again, we'll typically say approximate that as one. Uh, this change in sigma or in your stress. So remember, this is sigma max minus your amplitude minus sigma min, uh, and that's it. Uh, and also C. So C is another. This is going to be a constant as well. So this will be given, and will typically be given as well. And we'll see for a given initial crack length, uh, and if we know our uh, our critical crack length, which we can kind of solve using this expression, just uh, as we did previously. So again, we have A1C is equal to F times sigma. Here, this would be sigma max in your expression times square root by A. Just rearranging that again and getting our expression. So we could solve for what is your A. Uh, what is your critical crack length for a given stress and a given stress intensity uh, uh, parameter? So it's just rearranging the expression there. So uh, we go ahead and we could continue on with that. And you could figure out how many, what are the number of cycles to failure. So that's basically it for fatigue. Um, once you get, again, into this high re regime, it's, you know, uh, basically you get these kind of, uh, the reason why you get that almost kind of exponential growth is because they um, basically these microvoids will coalesce. So all the cracks in your material, all these little, um, all these different little micro cracks, will start to kind of uh, basically combine at this point. So you have micro cracks combining, and then you'll get you know voids opening up in your material. And once the voids start to happen, you're gone, you're done. So uh, this is your kind of critical equation here that you're going to need uh, to solve fatigue problems. And again, you're going to use this to plug in. Uh, for a given a sub c. So that's it. That's the number of cycles to failure. Now, how do you use this um, basically in engineering you know, life? Well, you are going to basically develop or you'll use these SN curves. So these SN curves tell you for a given stress amplitude, this, so let's look at the blue curve. If this is my stress amplitude here, and if I scroll over, let me use a different color. I'm going to use gray. So this is my stress amplitude. This will tell me once this point intersects with here, this is the number of cycles to failure for that red curve. If I kind of scroll along here, this is the number of cycles for the blue curve. And you can draw that for any different uh, any parameter here. So for a given stress amplitude, which material is always going to you know, uh, basically yield first? So you can see that for different stress amplitudes, you know, some of these materials are going to fail, some of these materials aren't going to fail. So for this stress amplitude, the green will fail first. There's a the fewest number of cycles because it's here, here, and here. The red will survive. However, over here, lower stress amplitudes, you kind of see these different behaviors. So these SN curves are really useful uh, curves for you uh, in real life engineering to kind of see, will your material survive for that particular application? So fatigue is a very common loading state. You can kind of just think of it in terms of like sitting on a chair and getting up from a chair, cars going across from a bridge. A really common one is like the uh, pressurization of an airplane. So they will, um, to figure out what is your kind of initial crack size, what is this A naught, you will typically see people, um, and you see it all the time on airplanes, they will kind of do an ultrasound to figure out what is your distribution of initial crack sizes. And that they'll plug in this expression and see, okay, how, how long, how many number of cycles do we have left for this airplane? So uh, really, really important parameters. Uh, we've kind of seen this um, aerospace problems with Boeing, although that wasn't fatigue related, but uh, really critical last part of mechanics. So. That's it. Congratulations. You finished mechanics. Um, prepare for exam two. And after that, we're going to get into corrosion, uh, polymers, and then maybe a little bit of electrical, optical, magnetic properties uh, to finish up. So, yeah, that's about it. Thanks.